You're watching Rules of the Game on Rider Nation Station, brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Ballers TV, Eagles Lodge 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, VFW 9289, Auglaise Equipment Rental, Guinari's Pizzeria, Focus Bake Shop, Schaff Auto Sales, Miller Funeral Homes, and Spee's Chiropractic and Wellness Center. Hello and welcome to Rules of the Game with Mark Sisko. I'm your host, Zach Farrell. Mark, thanks for joining me each and every week here as we discuss some of the clips from the game from the previous Friday. Zach, it's always a pleasure to be here, sir. We had an uh, excellent win from St. Mary's over the number one state ranked in Division IV Van Wert Cougars. And there were a lot of calls and close calls <laughs> and a little bit of controversy uh -oh. that came from the game. We have 16 clips, actually, to go through. All so right, well, whenever you're ready. Before we begin on that, though, I wanted to talk about there's been a story that's popped up this week around Grove City, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a group of officials that were in their locker room changing, and somebody uh, pushed a vending machine in front of the door, locking them in there after the game, after a controversial call. Just thought, wanted to hear your thoughts. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Any kind of conflict after the game? Not really. Not to that extent. I mean, you always have the once to want an individual who's probably been to the local refreshment establishment that's, that, that wants to hoot and holler about something. And, and quite honestly, that's what it is. You know, and wants to hoot and holler about something. And no matter win or lose, you, you get that once in a great while. Now, normally, we are provided with either an administrator or a, a, a law enforcement officer that escorts us routinely. And the schools are, are required to provide that to our, at least our locker room. And they're supposed to basically, I wouldn't say guarantee, but ensure that we are safe and sound until we get out of the parking lot on the way out of the game. So it sounds like to me, I don't know what happened there other than the fact that this, whoever did this um, pushed the door in front of it locker room door and they couldn't get out for a little while they, they eventually pushed it open I know they filed a, a, a report with the local police and that the Grove City Police is involved yeah as it should be well the first thing that popped in my head was we're, we're just talked we've talked for years about trying to get people into into officiating and into it mm -hmm. and then you see stories like this and it's like why would somebody want to put themselves in a position where they have to put put up with things like this so I hope so I hope they're prosecuted uh, fully exactly and, and I think the officials are doing the right thing by pursuing it because if you let that kind of thing stand you're right in in future years you know we're sitting here waiting for a game to come up Friday there won't be games on Friday right it's not only for that situation it's for the future and, and protecting Correct. officials in the future from any of escalating beyond Correct. this and, and, and it should have got that to that point in the beginning so it's it's not worth that it's a it's a school activity and mistakes are made whether the officiating crew made a mistake and whether they didn't don't know but you can't please anybody as you know you know right. know well so there you go we're going to go ahead and jump right into the clips Let's do then it. mark this first one was a late hit that was called on saint mary's uh pretty good effort i think by uh tanner howell here to sort of wrap the player up um, and it was sort of a late whistle, but you can see he threw him down there kind of at the end uh, of the play. Probably kind of that, that last little shove there at the end might have, might have done it. Um, if, I don't know that we can get another look at it, but, you know, it's, it's a situation where it's a big pile, and maybe there was something there, maybe there wasn't. I mean, the, the angle was a little bit tough. I, I remember to thinking see. in the broadcast, it was, I thought it was a little ticky-tacky because there were, they were still pushing, and the whistle was – just a couple seconds before he threw him down, and he's still in the middle of the field. But yeah, and the whistle doesn't kill the play. I mean, oh. the whistle does not kill the play. When forward progress was done, that's the end of the play. Okay. So it's possible to have a play with no whistle. Now, the OSHA wants us to have a whistle on every play, obviously. But the, the kids should know, in theory, that when the play is over. So the, the, probably that last little little push there might have might have been enough right yeah, if you just would have let him go or just let him fall yeah. maybe on his own you probably. know I know some in some areas of the state that that's going to draw a flag right away and other areas of the state in this area sometimes that's just that's just part of football well this next play we had was a false start on Van Wert you can see their uh, left tackle just sort of jumps right at, right there before the play right. and I just thought this was a good opportunity to talk about when can those offensive linemen move when are, when does it when does it count when they're set or not uh, because we have seen them sometimes rise up change of play things like that yeah once they put 
their hand on the ground and they're covered, let's say the white out down here on this end is covering up basically, he's, he's the last man on the line of scrimmage. That definitely was a false start by the left tackle. You know, they can't move until the ball snapped. Right. So he just missed the snap count and it happens even to the best of left tackles once in a while. Um, you know, so he was just thought the count went on something else and obviously everybody else didn't and he was probably he, he was wrong sure so there you go this next play was a holding call on number 61 so I believe it was one of the guards for Van Wert um, sort of uh, was Van Wert early on was trying to establish the run and uh, I think this was, uh, this was either a draw or a quick pass out by the quarterback um, yeah it was a draw right up there up the middle and what happened was, you see right down, the flag was thrown down there. 61 sort of laid on the player on the ground, and they called a holding call. Uh, that's, that. a, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, he's, he's, there's no way he can hold him down on the ground. I mean, he can't grab the turf and just hold him down. And, yeah, he didn't get up right away, but, uh, you know, is the kid just slow getting up? Is he's not? I mean, uh, that's probably, especially right there at the line of scrimmage. I mean, 61 comes around, blocks, holding uh, – Maybe he's pushing him down. Maybe he's not. Uh, yeah. that, 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 that might be a talk to, what we call a talk to the player. Look, we saw what you did. Let's not let that happen again, and we, and we move on. And the nice thing is we have an end zone view of it oh, here, good. so maybe we can get another look at it. At first I thought that the St. Mary's D tackle had jumped uh, off sides there, but uh, you see he got back on sides and uh, nothing was called. Yeah, he didn't cross into the neutral zone there. So he, he blocked him, pushes him down. I don't know. It's right there at the, the point of attack, and if you'd have left that alone, nobody said a word. This uh, next play was the, an interception by St. Mary's then on that drive. Uh, Ty Keel made a nice play on the ball. It's tougher. I, I just thought about uh, it, it maybe looked like he trapped the ball a little bit, but it was really tough to see. It was, was called an interception on the field and wasn't overturned, so... I uh, just thought about what, what's the official looking at yeah, to that's see that. A, I mean, that's a tough angle, but at that point, You've got probably at least three good sets of – the back judge clear at the back behind him doesn't have a good look. Right. He's not signaling anything because he doesn't know. So it comes around. The umpire there in the middle of the screen, he's going to turn when the ball is thrown. He's got a look at it as well, and the two wing guys – probably have a look so and we do have an end zone view of this one as well so we can see it from the back side but you know they tell us if if, if you're in, in in doubt of a tight catch no catch it's probably a catch right that's what they tell us as officials so we'll see if we get an even better look at, at this one it's tough to tell yeah back judge doesn't know he's 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 just running up there to try to figure out what what they've got and one of those calls that we get paid the huge dollars for. Well, this next play was, uh, if, if, you, if you look at number 18 there, the outside linebacker standing out there to the side, um, you'll see kind of after the tackle or during the tackle, he, he starts to pull on the helmet there, right on the back side of the helmet, and then he lets go. Okay. So. Uh, foul? No foul called. Could be a foul. But, but this is something I just wanted to put in, put in the back of your head for as we, as we discuss uh, as, this. As we go forward, forward here. Sure. Um, if that any any pulling on the helmet at, at any part of it is supposed to be illegal, the is rule that says any helmet opening. Okay. Okay. Front part, ear hole, chin strap is part of the helmet, and and the back openings underneath. And it looked know, like he was pulling on the back opening in that. That, that is that a helmet opening. If you pull on that, that's going to be a foul for a personal foul face mask. Yes. Okay. Even though you're not grabbing the face mask, any part of the helmet opening cannot be grabbed to use to to, to pull on. Okay. Well, this next, so just put that in your, put that in the Got back it. of your head. Mark. I think, the, I think that's a hint that something's it, coming down it, it the road, right? It might come up a, a okay. little bit. Uh, this was a late hit, but there was no, no call on it. It was after the receiver had touched the ball, and and, and I didn't, I thought it was a good call, but I, yeah, what are they looking I, for I there? I think they're, I mean, you're the, 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 the balls, the, the defender is already in the act of coming up. Could he have laid off of that, that contact with the receiver? Probably. Athletes today are, are pretty, are pretty athletic if you will I mean he probably could have but the ball was he was already in the act he was coming and if that would have been a foul there I could have supported that because it was probably a little bit iffy Coach Bo Fry talked about that this week that that play right there could have made a big difference in the game because that receiver uh, was a little jittery the rest of the game uh, dropped some wide open passes okay well I mean does it doesn't make the the, the the hit any less right or wrong right but if they'd have flagged that for you know uh, unnecessary roughness I, I could have supported that. Right. 
Yeah, this next call was just an encroachment call on Van Wert. Uh, this was on the uh, field goal. Didn't block it, but uh, may have gotten a hand on it because the ball was really low off, <laughs> off the kick. He's, he's really across the line of scrimmage big time there. And they shut that down right away. That's a dead ball foul. Okay, so basically the, the kick didn't happen. We just move it and, and it's going to go again. So you can't say to that point, if that had been good, you can't say, well, we'll take the points and you, we'll You can't forget. decline that. No, you can't. That's, that's a false start encroachment. That's a dead ball foul. Play never happened. That gave St. Mary's a really short fourth down that they went for then after that. I, think, I don't think they got it actually on that uh, drive, but uh, it was a pretty pivotal uh, encroachment call there. Sure. Uh, this next penalty was probably the most controversial of the game. This was an offensive pass interference called on Van Wert that took away a touchdown. Um, in real life, I can tell you, I thought that it was. I thought that he pushed off pretty okay. well. I could see his arm extend. Okay. Watching it now on film, I, I do see it uh, extend again right there. He sort of pushes him a little bit. Um, but who had the flag there? Did the back judge have the flag? It did not come from the back judge. Okay. It, it came from one of the wing guys. And there. we have a, another view of this. It came from one of the wing guys um, from this, this side. Below it. Yep. Below the play. Um, and did and they, when we slowed it down on Friday night, I didn't think it was as obvious as I had thought watching it in real time. But this is a pretty good view here of uh, the play. You can see him, see him sort of bump him right there. It creates separation. It creates a separation. If he created separation there, that's probably a good call. Um, yeah, I mean, they could run side by side. It's not a problem. And then when they, when they run down and they're hand fighting as they go down, that's not going to get called. But as soon as you see that push and, and the hand out and there's separation made there, that's a good indication that that's, that's offensive pass interference. And that's what I thought, too, watching it now again uh, for the third or fourth time uh, on the replay. I thought, yeah, that, that's sort of definitionally yeah, what, what you, you, you look for. Yeah, you don't for. see that very often, or at least that's not called very often. It doesn't often. get called very often, Especially no. in a situation like that where they're running side by side and they're both looking for the football. But he just did enough, and it doesn't take much to create that separation. That's all he needed to catch it. So. Well, uh, if that wasn't enough for Van Wert, the, that, that brought him basically to half, and we came back after after half and they ran the opening kickoff back however it was called back for holding or uh, blocking below the waist uh, right there in the middle of the screen and I'll be honest it's really tough to see on the replay <laughs> we've got two angles of it I think the, that the, what they called it on is you can see a, a defender getting hit right there and he gets pulled backwards from about the 35 yard line to maybe the uh, from about the 30-yard line to the 25-yard line, he sort of gets pulled backwards by by the defender while the while the kick returner runs past them. Well, well that'll maybe this will be a little bit better angle. We, maybe we can see it a yeah. little bit better. Um, so if you kind of look up towards the left hash as the St. Mary's guy gets there, he gets pulled backwards and kind of taken out of the play right there, and he ends up in the backfield. And that's where they threw. Well, somebody the flag. got it. somebody did a nice job getting that right there. So it's it's so they were looking for something. Um, clock started, the referee comes up. I don't think he throws the flag. Maybe he does. Somebody in the middle of the field got it. I think it was the... Uh, the wing guy, maybe, huh? Or maybe the, maybe the guy coming down here. Yeah, yeah, that's not the referee's flag. So, it must have been an obvious call. So, I mean, you don't see that a lot. And it's got to be obvious for us to call something like that there. Right. So. Well, it was, it was very, uh, very pivotal. Those two calls, uh, you know, <laughs> took two touchdowns away from well, Van sure Wert. It could have yeah. been a much different game. This was the other controversial call of the night. Okay. So we had them back to back to back. This was an interception. Well, th this was a pass thrown by Van Wert. Appeared to me to be caught by the Van Wert receiver and then taken away by Tanner Howe. The ball comes out on the ground. St. Mary's recovers it. The, the uh, back judge calls it St. Mary's ball. Uh, the officials had a huddle. Right. Came back out and said it was no an incomplete pass. Okay. I probably would have bought that other than, other than the, the, the initial catch, fumble, and, and going the other way. My point of view was that, to me, looking right there, he catches the ball. He takes at least two or three steps, I thought, before, the, before it starts to get pulled out. And that's what the back out. judge is looking at as well. I mean, I could buy that as well. So he, initially, he makes that call, determines that, yes, there was a catch, and now they're f fighting for it, and St. Mary's kid rips it out of there, and, and it comes loose. I could have bought that. And my, and my other issue that I had with it is the official that was standing right there, five, ten feet away, called it like that 
said that this was the, that was it. Is this the same play here? This is the same play from a different right, angle. Let's see if we get a, a, any kind of different look at it. And there the ball comes out. Yeah, I don't know. It comes out there sooner than I thought. So maybe he just didn't have it long enough, so to speak. Maybe he just, you know, it was fuss and fighting. It was loose in there. And, right. And if, it, if that was the case, then it was basically a no catch and, and it was incomplete pass. It would be interesting to hear from the coaches if they – well, I don't think Coach – we talked to Coach Bo about it. He didn't hear anything differently. But if they saw it maybe bobbling around inside, you hope that somebody saw something very differently. To, yeah, for, but you're for looking – like you know, you've got five guys and the back judges looking at that, and the other two are, 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 are farther away away. And their, their conversation was, did he have it long enough – for us to rule a catch and then a fumble. Right. And they must have talked the back judge out of it and went with the incomplete pass. Well, this next play was a uh, PAT block uh, by St. Mary's and just thought we could talk about, um, for one, the rules. We, it cannot be returned in high school. Correct. And then for two, the long snapper, you can see is kind of complaining there at the end of that. That he got, that he got, that uh, he got roughed? Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's a consideration. Um, they're tight in there, and normally now teams will not line somebody up directly over the, the snapper. Now, you can't see on that angle whether there's somebody, but they can line them up in the gaps. And, and just so long the rule says, look, you can't contact directly the snapper until he's had a chance to protect himself. Well, you know, they look down and they snap the football, and, of course, they're all coming right away. Yeah. But that doesn't prevent those, those defensive linemen from shooting trying to get to the gap. The, 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 the intent of the rule is to stay off the head okay. and the neck. So if they're going to line up and, and try to get through the gaps, that's permissible. Did, would they, did it make a difference that the fact that he blocked it from the outside, not blocking it from the inside? No, nah, it doesn't okay. make any difference one way or another. I mean, they line up. Uh, is, is this the play here? No, it's no, not. This okay. Is a, this is the next one. But. So normally teams will not even put anybody over the, over the center. Okay. Okay. But they could put them up in the gap and, and say, look, we're going through the gap. And basically, if, if you're not contacting the head neck area on that initial rush, you're not going to call roughing. And I think a lot of that contact was probably from the, the guards being pushed into And him could well. very well be. And yeah. if that's the case, then, there, then we have nothing. Yeah. That's all. This next play, uh, I, I thought number 18, again, pulled on a helmet. So okay. just another one to put in the back of your head here. Uh, <laughs> you can see him coming at the end over here. Uh, and right there at the end, he's on the ground, and he sort of swings his hand over. On, yeah. On that. that's not, not quite as uh, egregious as the last one or maybe a following uh, clip that's going to come oh, okay, up. Okay, maybe but, so. Uh, All right. Right at the end there, he sort of runs his ha hands a little bit harder on, on the bottom of the pile there. Just something to Just something to keep in mind. Keep in I, mind. I get that. All right. This next play was a blocking below the waist called on uh, 52, which is the left guard for St. Mary's. He, he shoots over, and I, I don't know if it was the new, one of the new calls about not uh, being too low. So this is the left guard for St. Mary's? Left guard for St. Mary's, uh, and he immediately after the snap sort of dives to his right. Wow. Watching it on replay, I don't see him actually hit anybody. I don't know if they just thought it was like a he, he was tripping somebody because he was laying on the ground and they were pushing that way. We yeah. do have another angle here that shows it as well. All right, let's see here once. Oh, he goes a long way, which they've told us in our preseason meetings that if he goes immediately down, even though he's got to take a step you know, one way or the other and, and go down, that that's, that's, that's legal. Now, I'm like you, on that angle, I don't see him really hitting anybody. No. So that would not be a foul. I mean, obviously, you don't hit anybody. You, you, you've, there's no contact, and it's not a problem. I, I did see several times Van Wert's coaches yelling at the officials saying, watch below the waist, that sort of thing. So maybe it was a point of emphasis that they, were, that they had been you know, made aware that they were looking for diving out and things like that, and they decided. Well, if they only got you know, on a – that was the only call, the call that was that was maybe marginal on on the contact. Then, then the officials just took that to heart and said, "Well, we're not seeing anything along those lines." This next play was a tackle on St. Mary's runner that uh, a lot of people in the fans stand, a lot of fans in the stands thought was a horse collar. Um, I thought though that rewatching it, he had more of just the jersey, and we've talked before that the the jersey is uh, is legal as long as you don't have a piece of equipment, right? Well. 
And the rule now says, you know, obviously if you grab them inside the collar from the back behind and pull them down sideways or, or, or backwards, that's a, that's a horse collar. But they added the nameplate area of the jersey oh. this, this past year to say, look, if you, if you reach up into the nameplate area, which is just below the collar, and pull down, it's the same thing. It's, it's a horse collar as well. So they, he may had him you know, where the nameplate might have been. And he definitely pulls him down sideways. So, yeah, I could support a blinds or a, a, a horse collar foul right there. Sure, that's a good point. I, I didn't realize that they included the name mm -hmm. tag area because that was definitely the name tag area. If it even if it was the jersey. So, yep. Um, we have another just clip here of uh, eighteen twisting things a little bit okay. on the pile after the play. Just something else to put in your mind here for the next clip. So that's 18 on the ground, and you can see him sort of. See, I'm wondering if, 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 the, if the kids for St. Mary's said something to the officials. You know, this guy's, what, what's he doing to us here? I mean, I don't know that they would, they would know, but sometimes the kids will come and make complaints to us and say, hey, could you watch such and such? Sure, we'll do that. I mean, you know, the kids don't normally, in this area, Northwest Ohio, don't say much to one right. another. They just play football. And look, these are high school kids, so it's, you know, it's not, I'm yeah. not trying to pick on anybody, but this next play is the reason why I brought all these up. Okay. So this was a quarterback sneak from St. Mary's. Uh, Gavin Reinecke uh, digs down in the middle, and you can see 18 wow. pretty clearly grab the helmet and throw it. Clearly, and if it's quarterback, and I don't know how, who, who, where the quarterback is right here, in that mass of humanity... Okay, so okay, we we so we've got, 18 takes it. Oh, there's definitely it. there's an issue there. Sure, that should should have been a foul for for face mask or whatever. Then and then that would have allowed the St. Mary's quarterback to stay in the game because the helmet come off because of the foul. All right, and 18 would would have had to. Well, he he could have stayed, but he'd been tagged with a face mask penalty. And we've talked about that before that uh, because St. Mary's did call a timeout here to get their backup quarterback into the game. Right, but. We talked about that before. A timeout does not allow you to put that player back in the game. Something the helmet coming off is treated like an injury, and you cannot buy the player whose helmet came off back into the game with the timeout. In the college game, you can, but in the high school game, you cannot. He's going to be out for, for a play. And uh, fortunately, Kyle Kogi came in and scored a touchdown, on, uh, <laughs> quarterback sneak on his birthday. Got birth a TD that he made on his birthday. Had, right? <laughs> yep. So, so it all worked out, but that was pretty egregious. A lot of us saw that. And, sure. And, and, it's dis and we were kind of disappointed by it because it could have been a big play if you're talking about a, a different part of the field. Or Absolutely. Else. So Absolutely. This next play then was the final play of uh, really of the, of the game after this was a couple kneeling. But this is the interception to sort of seal the deal for St. Mary's. Um, nice pressure in the face of the Van Wert quarterback, and St. Mary's you know, pretty clearly picks off the ball and then goes down. And then goes down with it. Smart move. So, so we had a longtime uh, dedicated viewer bring up this uh, question. Okay. Could St. Mary's have run around in the end zone and just killed time for a while and then went down? Sure. And he's not, and there's no delay a game with that. He can he can pretty much do that until he they could, touch. He could have ran it out. He could have ran it back all the way for a touchdown if he wanted to. That sure. was that was the other question. Then so it, it, unlike the kickoff, they can still run it out of the touchdown. Yeah, absolutely, with an interception. it's a live ball right there. He probably did the smart thing. Was that fourth down? By the that way, that was fourth down. Yeah, fourth down. He could have just swatted it down as well. Right. But as he did, he caught it. It comes back out to the 20, and St. Mary's will snap if they need to, or the or the game is over, whatever the time says on the clock. So in the end zone, you can run around as much as you want. Uh, let the time go as much as you want. You can run it all the way back for a touchdown as much mm -hmm. as you want. If it's an interception or, or I right. assume a fumble or Absolutely. anything like that. The only time that uh, we're calling the play dead is on a kick return. What about a punt? Same thing. Same thing. Scrimmage okay. kick. You can't once the ball crosses the, the the goal line or touches the goal line, it's it's dead. You can't run kick. those okay. things out of out of the end zone. All right. right. Well, I think that's enough clips for for one okay. week, Mark. <laughs> We're going to be back next week with a whole uh, mess of clips from the Shawnee game. Well, uh, let's hope there's not a mess of clips for either well, team. You well, know? let's hope they're good clips for for there St. You go. Mary's. There you it's, go. It's again home here at. Uh, uh, Grand Lake Health System Field, and uh, we're excited. And thank you again for coming. It's always a pleasure, Zach. You're watching Rules of the Game on Rider Nation Station, brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Ballers TV, Eagles Lodge 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, VFW 9289, Auglaise Equipment Rental, 
Glenary's Pizzeria, Focus Bake Shop, Schaff Auto Sales, Miller Funeral Homes, and Spee's Chiropractic and Wellness Center. Thanks for watching another episode of Rider Nation Station. Help us help you by subscribing on YouTube or following us on Facebook.